talk about the EMAs on how I use them as day trading, swing trading, and maybe in options. I uh, use the 9, the 34, and I also use the 200. So this is a diagram of the moving averages. The, the 9 EMA is going to be the blue one, the 34 is going to be the white one, and the 200 is going to be the orange. First I want to talk about is the takeaways, the key takeaways with these moving averages. The EMA is a moving average that places a greater weight and significance on the most recent data points. Like all moving averages, this technical indicator is used to produce buy and sell signals based on crossovers and divergence from the historical average. And also, traders often use several different EMAs. You know, some use the 9, for instance, uh, some others use the 20, the 30, the 90, and the 200. I personally use the 9 right now, the 34, and the 200, and I'm always practicing using other moving averages. So those are the key takeaways. They're a little bit faster than they are the SMAs. I've also used the SMAs, the 20, the 50, the 100, and the 200. And I've also used them for a long period of time, so I know them pretty well also. So let's go to the first stock we're going to talk about, and that's going to be Six Flags 6. As you notice, we showed a lot of disrespect for the 9 here as it sold off to that 48-40 area. And then all of a sudden we started seeing a little cup and handle forming. And once that cup and handle formed, it had to break out. Well, the news popped out on this stock, and we were also alerted about there was a lot of calls being put into this trade in the options room. So... Once it crossed over that 9, crossed over that 34, it started showing respect to that 9, and it ran up the next day, had the big breakout of the 9, and I think that's when we were alerted this, this about the unusual calls that were placed on this order. As you see, once it followed that 9 for about 3 or 4 days, and then started showing a little bit of disrespect, so that would have been a great exit point. Once it hit the double top, and it decided not to hit that double top, then it started disrespecting that nine, that would have been time to get out of this trade. But again, notice the crossovers. See the crossovers, and then on this day especially, we had the big breakout, the big gap up, and then she respected that nine. So that's how I would have used that in this trade. And I'm gonna just pull it up to the daily one minute, and you can see the crossovers that happen. And these time frames will change the moving averages, how they, how they look. But well, we did have the crossover right here, and then bam, she went ahead and ran all the way up. And then she started creating support levels off the 34 and off the 200. And once it lost respect for more or less, after these three big white soldiers came in, I would have probably went ahead and exited this trade in the first place. Then you started seeing a descending pattern showing on this, on this, uh, on this stock. And then she went ahead and pulled on back. So yes, the lower highs would have been a good indicator to get out of this trade also. Especially in that kind of time frame, 10 minute time frame. Is when this here charts a daily one minute. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be one that everybody should be looking at every day. And that's the SPY. Kind of tells you about being in the now. So we're going to look at the yearly first. And I called this out last year. I said, once the first of the year came, we were going to have a turnaround in the market. Well, she started bouncing up once we had that big sell-off back in December. And everybody can remember that. It ran all the way up here from 293 all the way down to 233 and that was like a $60 dip in three months, and that's huge for the SPY. It lost disrespect for the 200, all of the moving averages. And then once she bounced above that moving average, she started gaining respect for that nine. Touched down once here to the to the uh, thir to the 34, and then again she touched down here to the 200. Once it hit that 200, and we got that indicator right here, it's it decided to go ahead and bounce on up. And the platform I use is Thinkorswim by Ameritrade for my charting tools. I also trade on it too. But then we've hit a double new high up here at 298, still gaining respect for that 9 EMA. So let's pull it up to the 20 day. As you can see, 
it's respected that 20 day more or less and then we had some disrespect and it went ahead and sold off and then she went ahead and respected it again bouncing off that 34 and let's pull it up to the daily one minute and as I'm looking at it as maybe a day trade we did pull back down here below the nine disrespecting it most of the morning then all of a sudden she started respecting it we had the crossover of the 34 and we also cried the three crossovers right here of the 200 which gave it a real strong buy so the stock ran all the way up to resistance level that we've had previously chalked down and she hit that 2.98.66 and then started disrespecting that 9 again that was time to get out once you see that disrespect it's time to go ahead and sell the stock and she never did regain respect for that 9 day for the rest of the day and it can pull back to this 200 so I would wait to get back in this trade maybe at that 200 EMA on a daily one minute but I'll be watching this close come Monday and see if it sells off a little more and see if it does not bounce off that 200 or off my other trend line down here that I have at 297.78 I use these just as important as I use the moving averages and I'm also paying attention to the RSI that I have right down here see we've had a little crossover and I'm also looking at the tape. I also have this set up to the time and sales. I also have the news where I can see the news pop up. Anything that, you know, we got in this trade when we heard that they were shipping off some Raptors over to the Middle East. The stock dipped real fast, but then she regained and bounced right back up. So I'm always looking at the level two, and I'm looking at this time and sales. That tells me a lot about a stock. And I'm also looking for fake walls down here on the level two and the spread on how wide the spread is. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be a penny stock. And I can use these in all different price frames. TRNX. And now, <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is pull up the early chart. And I'm looking at them and I'm watching the level two and I'm watching the time and sales, seeing how big the blocks are coming in. The yearly chart doesn't tell me much. So I'm gonna, this is a stock that I've been watching for over two years. And we've had, I think it's very oversold and it's worth probably more than it's actually worth right now. We followed this all the way up from 50 cents to a buck. And then now she's pulled all the way back down to 12 cents here, 12.90 last week, last Monday, last Tuesday. And then we had that nice little breakout pre-market and that was an indicator for me to keep an eye on this stock and see if it pulled back to my support level. Now I've drawn these support lines in here looking for supports and resistances off the candlesticks in places of consolidation. So as we respected that 9 Friday morning, and I'm going to pull this up to a one day, one minute, and you can see what I'm talking about. We did have the crossovers right here, and then she started popping up on the scanner, and that was time to get in this trade. It respected that nine most of the most of the day after that. And then at the end of the day, you're going to have your people getting in and out of this trade, selling it. I call it a pullback to 21 cents. It did pull back to that 21, bounced off of it a couple of times, and then that would have been a nice little two penny scalp right there. That 10,000 shares would have netted you 200 bucks right there with about a $2,100 investment, and that would have been real fast and not very painful. And I did call that solid support. And I also had a low support down here at 19. I figured it might pull back and hit that 19 and bounce up like it did before. Because we did have a peak there and it did pull back. But always respecting that 9. So I'm always using these as support levels too. As you can see, it did pull back and hit right here that, that 200. Which gave it a real strong buy off my trend line indicator. And we did pull back a couple of times there. So that was a real strong support level right there. You could have took that after hours at 21 and ran it up to 23 and got back out of it again. Once you hit that little resistance. We did have lower highs here, which kind of, then we had that descending pattern. But once it hit that 200, it decided to go ahead and bounce on up. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on this TRNX. And I'm going to be watching it all next week. See if I can scalp it. This will be a scalper trade for me, not a swing. Maybe keep a core position if it act anything like this did. 
So that's and then the last one we're going to talk about is going to be one that ran real strong off news. There's indicators that I go. I always like to look at the news, and that's KPTI. I'm always thinking of what the other man's going to do, the short. They see a breakout stock like this, they usually like to short stuff like this. So I've been was drawing resistances and support lines on this chart all day Friday. After we broke that high, I found an equilibrium right around 940. And so I was looking for new resistances that we were going to hit. And, you know, we didn't hit any of those next four, but we did run up and hit that, that, one, that important one. And that was right in here at this level right in here, right around 1045. And you can see what I mean. We did pull back to that and it did bounce up to that and hit that 1214 resistance and then pulled right back down to it. So we're going to use these as a 10 day now. Uh, 10 day ain't going to tell me much, so I'm going to go to the five day, five minute. We did have the crossover right here. It did touch that 200, respected that nine most of the day. Once it started disrespecting the nine, that was the time to get out. But I had a, a support level at 940, and I didn't thought it, it would bounce off that 940, and it sure did. It bounced off of it a couple times. It thought about it in this period right here for a little bit, decided that it couldn't take it, so it pulled back and almost hit that 200. So let's pull it up to the daily one minute now. This is how it looked Friday, pre-market. Did run back, it had that huge breakout, so I took my 100 shares out of it, and then it pulled back to 940, and then she back bounced on up to that 1045 again, and then she disrespected the nine most of the day. Come back a couple times, it would bounce up and try to break past that and hit that 200, but just couldn't do it. And when I'm seeing these averages, like right here, it's pretty respectful. You have the 200 on the bottom, you have the 34 and the nine. But then when the nine crossed down below the 200, same as a 34, you've got a lot of disrespect right there. And it tried to respect it a couple of times, just couldn't do it. I like to see these two moving averages above the 200 to be bullish. Below it, I'm bearish. But I also will scalp these trades if they hit my trend lines and bounce back up to that 200. That would have been a scalp for me. That would have been 837 all the way back up here to Oh, this 876, about a 40 cent scalp. You know, a couple hundred shares, 500 shares, depends on how deep you want to go in this trade. So that's KPTI. I hope I helped you out with some of these moving averages. I use them as supports, resistance, and pivot points. And, and I like to see if they respect nine. In summary, you know, as long as it's keep above that nine and that nine's above the 234, I'm very bullish on it. Once they start to bend down and cross back down, I start to get a little disrespectful with it. And I'll take my profit and I'll wait and I'll be patient.